Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome to the 2020 edition of the Denver United Christmas Eve celebration. And we are so thrilled that you are here and I bring you Christmas greetings in the midst of these uncertain times. These uncertain times, a phrase that will certainly and forever frame this year that we have just walked through together. And in a year where so much has changed, man, how much more meaningful and valuable are the things that remain the same? And here at Denver United, our Christmas Eve celebration is a staple. It's a tradition where we come together from all across the city and beyond to throw a big birthday party for Jesus. And while the form might look different this year, uh, the essence, the spirit, um, and the celebration remains the same. And that's what we're going to do today. We are going to celebrate Jesus this Christmas Eve. We've got some great things planned for you in the time that we share together. Uh, so many members of the DU family have worked so hard putting this together, bringing all their diverse giftings and talents together, all for the purpose of celebrating Jesus this Christmas Eve. So, man, I really think that y'all are going to enjoy this. In fact, I know you're going to enjoy this. So thank you for being here. Sit back get comfortable, and may your hearts be filled with wonder and expectation and with joy and with hope as we celebrate Jesus in these uncertain times. Church, we love you so much, and thanks for celebrating with us this Christmas. Merry Christmas, Denver United family. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And in the Denver United community, we celebrate and worship honoring Jesus' arrival, his advent, at this time of year in such a special way. I love gathering with you all for this time every Christmas Eve. Thanks for being here with us to worship and celebrate our Savior's birth. Church, it's such a privilege to be with you in your homes this evening. And you know, this time of year is the most incredible time that we get to think back on the name of Jesus. Prophesied by Isaiah centuries ago, his name was called Emmanuel, God with us. And you know, that speaks of the essence and nature of God, not just who he was, but who he was to us. And that is our hope and our prayer for you this Christmas, that you would experience Jesus, Emmanuel, God with you. He has come to us this Christmas, and he is still coming. In the midst of our pain, in the midst of our waiting, he has come to us, and we pray that you would experience him in the fullness of his presence this year in your home. So we invite you to join us in celebrating and honoring the advent of our Savior, his arrival, as we remember it 2,000 years ago and receive it afresh and anew in 2020. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we honor you tonight for your care and for your coming. Jesus, we welcome you. This gathering is a celebration in your honor. And so we ask that you be lifted up and glorified. Find pleasure in the hearts of your people that are so completely devoted to you. We love you, Jesus. It's in your wonderful name we pray. Amen.
Mm. Hello there. Merry Christmas, been reunited. I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 35. <clears throat> now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Wow, that's incredible, seriously. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I don't know a man? <laughs> and the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. This is how the birth of Jesus. This is how the birth of Jesus. The Messiah came Messiah. about. The Messiah came about. The Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. To marry to Joseph. But before they came together. Before they came together. She was found to be pregnant. She was found to be pregnant. Through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law. Was faithful to the law. And yet, and yet, did not want to expose her to public disgrace. And yet, did not want her to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind, had in mind to divorce her quietly. Divorce her quietly. After he said all this, an angel comes in him of a dream and said, "Do not be afraid. Don't do not be afraid. To take Mary as your wife. To take Mary as your wife." But she didn't hurt. Of a holy spirit. She will get possession. You are going to give the name of Jesus. Because he will save his people from this. Go. In those days, Caesar Augustus used issued, issued a the de, decree 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 that a Kansas census census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first season census. census that took place while wild while Cre Croesus Corinius Corinius 
was governor. Governor. Governor of Syria. 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 And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from their town of Nazareth in Gil Galilee. Galilee. I can't see. <laughs> to jo Judea. Judea to be Bethlehem. Bethlehem, they, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register, but Mary who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While near one there, the time came for the baby to be born.
waiting waiting for the one that's spoken of in the prophecies born of a virgin a man out of nazareth will shut the mouths of kings and save the oppressed and brokenhearted and someday receive punishment for our peace waiting your people are waiting hanging on for centuries it's embedded in our memory Waiting on your promise on bended knees Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord Dreaming of the day that many will never get to see But have our prayers gone hollow? Will our sorrow come to an end tomorrow? Will you do what we never thought possible? We're walking around with heavy hearts like cargo down the long, daunting road. We've been waiting with expectation, but as each day goes by, it gets harder and harder. We've seen faith die like a martyr. People are starting to doubt, their eyes wander and wander. You wanted our attention, but as we keep living in tension, faced with opposition, standing at the door of remission, waiting to be delivered, waiting to be reconciled, Birth hope in us like a newborn child We are waiting and waiting Is it too much to ask when are you saving us? By your hand, you're able to bring down entire infrastructures You didn't create us only to see us fall like the days after summer As evil and death runs rampant Stealing like bandits From this point of view, we're never at a disadvantage The future hangs in the balance as the world is filled with malice, hearts have gone callous, unable to let go while their souls are being ravaged. Only time will tell, and it doesn't matter what form of hell begins to swell around us. We possess something greater than guts and will. God in the unknown, we will wait. At nightfall, we will wait. We will never know true peace without pain. Come and renew our strength. See, the answer will be known by many names On David's throne he will reign with justice and righteousness His name will be exalted and sustained The Messiah Waiting, your people are waiting Throughout history, God's people have been waiting. Scripture records that from the beginning, 
They were waiting to be delivered from slavery, waiting to be freed from captivity, waiting for a redeemer, waiting for a Messiah. The prophet Isaiah wrote, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And for 700 years, his people waited. In the words of the favorite carol, long lay the world in sin and error, pining until he appeared. Even Jesus came into the world to a ragtag band of family and a welcoming party thrown together and all of them waiting. Jesus himself, fully human, walking our road, spent 30 years in obscurity, waiting like we do. For two, two and a half years, he spoke God's truth. Taught people what right looks like. Did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. Returned to heaven. And here we are, waiting. Advent means arrival, and this is the season in which we remember, we commemorate the waiting, and we celebrate the fulfillment with the birth of Jesus, the Messiah. But even as we celebrate Jesus' arrival, the Christmas season invites us into waiting anew and afresh because as God's people made in his image, we're made to wait, longing, expectation is hardwired into our soul. Henry Nouwen wrote about this so poignantly. The whole meaning of the Christian community lies in offering a space in which we wait for that which we have already seen. Waiting together, nurturing what has already begun, expecting its fulfillment. That is the meaning of the Christian life. Waiting for what has already begun. This is the mystery of Christmas. What for hundreds of years the people of Israel awaited, we have received, and yet we wait anew. Augustine, some 1,600 years ago, wrote so profoundly, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. To be human is to long, to wait, to expect. And so it makes sense, right? That our souls would be undersatisfied, would go unfulfilled with this temporary stuff. The word of God teaches that he has written eternity on the human heart. And so we're made to be unsatisfied by what we live amongst and what we see around us. Christmas brings this dull background longing, this ache of a thousand generations for a brief window of time into clear focus. Yes, we're made for the waiting, but the problem is we live in an era, in a society that gives us so much to fill up on that we scarcely have to wait. I have two teenage sons and they're growing rapidly. They're like men with teenage souls. They're hungry all the time. The other day we were coming home from practice. Anderson was ravenous and he kept saying, I'm so hungry. And I said, mom's got dinner ready, but I'm so hungry. He came in the door and headed for the snack cabinet got a power bar and started eating that when dinner was ready on the stove. A few minutes more and the meal which mom had prepared was there for him. And this is the way we live our lives. 
wired to long, to wait, to eagerly expect the fulfillment of the kingdom. And yet, it is our principal work to make room in our hearts, to exercise the muscles that are so weak and atrophied by life in a fast-paced consumer culture and to wait anew. Jesus said, look, I am making all things new. Jesus will come again and we wait in expectation for his return. But between the time when he died on the cross so that we could be forgiven and free and when he returns again, Jesus has undertaken the kingdom. He said the good news when he came to earth about which we should repent and prepare our hearts is that the kingdom of heaven is coming here and now. And with his kingdom, Jesus is putting everything to rights. He's restoring all that God created and called good and has been defaced. All that is broken and in bondage in me. All that is broken and enslaved in the world around me. Jesus is restoring it all and he says to wait for it. And Christmas says, wait for it. This is the message of Christmas across the millennia from an obscure hillside village, a backwater barn, a humble manger, a baby who waited himself floating in amniotic fluid for nine months in order to be born into the world which he would save. He whispers, at Christmas, will you wait for it? Will you wait for the redemption of all things? And so this is the challenge of Christmas. In the words of the favorite carol, let every heart prepare him room. This Christmas, will you prepare room in your heart? Will you make room for Jesus? Will you wait for him for whom the ages waited to come and make all things new? Because Jesus Christ died on a cross so that you and I could be forgiven and free. So that we could receive a brand new start and live anew. And little by little, bit by bit, sometimes in tidal waves and sometimes in droplets, in fits and spurts as it comes, the kingdom of God would make old things new, would make broken things whole and would make dull things shine again. Jesus said, I am the light of the world and whoever walks in me will never be in darkness. This Christmas season, after the tree's taken down and the presents are opened and the feast is cleaned up, the invitation remains. Will you make room in your heart for Jesus? for him to come and make all things new and finish the good work that he has begun. The prophet Isaiah declared, Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around, and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult. Isaiah 60, 1 through 5. Join us in lighting our candles as a reminder of the light of Jesus that shines to the world through you and me. Señor Jesús, te damos gracias por tu luz que da, Señor, tu presencia en medio de la oscuridad. 
y que puede ser, Señor, llevada a través de tus hijos y de tus hijas. Gracias por tu esperanza y por tu salvación, por lo que tú has traído, Señor, a este mundo. Y oramos por todas aquellas personas, Señor, que no te conocen, por todas aquellas personas, Señor, que necesitan de tu luz. Gracias por tu bendición, gracias por tu salvación y gracias, Señor, por lo que tú haces a través de tus hijos y que tu luz, Señor, sea llevado a todas las naciones, a toda lengua, a toda nación. En el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Church, as you light your candles from your homes with your families, we just want to worship together as we sing these familiar carols. Let's draw near to Christ, our Savior.
It's so good to be together worshiping the Lord Jesus on Christmas Eve. We love you so much. You know, Jesus is described in scripture as the light of the world. And it says that uh, he came into the darkness and the darkness couldn't understand it and couldn't overcome it. Well, we get to be that light, the love, the hope, and the redemption of Jesus in a lost and dying world. And so that's why we give as a part of our worship. We invite you to give together with us this evening and what we receive we'll give away to those in our city and around the world who are lost, hopeless, dying, and looking for love. Mari, would you pray for us as we give? Yes. God, thank you for the privilege that it is to be generous. God, it is a reflection, God, an opportunity that we have to be generous in every occasion because you were generous with us by sending your son. So God, we ask that you would use our gifts, God, to make a difference, God, to bring light into the world that we live in. God, it is such an honor to serve you with our gifts. So God, would you use them? Would you multiply them, God, and cause them to, to be a force of light in our city, our nation, our world? God, it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you all so much. Thanks for joining together with us on Christmas Eve to celebrate and to honor the Lord Jesus at his arrival. May God bless you this Christmas and may the joy of the Lord that comes with Jesus strengthen you in the year ahead.